time to get serious with Mega March. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Mega March, which, very much like Litanium Rods, won't be invented for thousands of years. Oh. <laughs> it certainly feels like it won't be over for a thousand years if you're going to keep <laughs> kidding me with jokes like that. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Yeah, I'm sorry. My name is Coleman X, and as always, <laughs> I am joined with my good buddy from the future. Soon to be ex co host. <laughs> My name is Twitch from Revelate Revo. How's it going, everyone? <laughs> I told this man, go ahead, just just do the joke. Don't tell me what it is. I'll, I want a genuine reaction. That was a genuine reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Your sense of humor won't be invented for another thousand years. Oh, man, take that, me. <laughs> Oh my goodness, we're here. The Ramblin' Reploids have arrived into the past to go and yes. talk about... Where do I start? <laughs> I mean, let's start in the future and then work our way back. Because we sense. have Ruby Spears X and we have Iwamoto X from the manga. So we're going to start with Ruby Spears and yes. see where this then... takes us. Oh yes, this episode is going to be all about those super handsome versions of X. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, what's funny is you, you did the oh yeah, but all I heard was the goofy Rush saxophone in the background in my head. <laughs> Not even like a sexy saxophone, like you know, like when Rouge the Bat is on screen or something. Just the <laughs> stupid, goofy, dopey Rush one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, alright, here, uh, Ruby Spears X, yes, if you guys didn't know, <laughs> Mega Man X comes back to the past to go team up with the original Mega Man in the Ruby Spears animated cartoon. Um, and yeah, this is a pretty different interpretation of X, about the only thing that is still, like, even remotely close to what he's supposed to look like is his helmet. Yeah. Uh, except, kind of interesting. Except for the back. It wraps around like X8. You beat him to the punch. It's true, they did beat him to the punch. Well, that's because he comes from the future, and X8 wasn't created yet. That's true. X8, X8 won't be is, created X8 for X8 takes of years. place in the future, and X is coming from the future. Therefore, All right. duh. It makes yeah. perfect sense. I get it. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So, here's super handsome... Uh, Supermodel X, look at this guy. He's got, like, a way more human face than anyone else in the show. It's got way more, like, detail. He looks not very much like a cartoon character. I mean, it's still obviously a cartoon, but he looks more, like, serious? They, You know what's interesting? They got his green eyes correct. Yes. I don't know if that was established when this cartoon was developed, but yeah, Mega Man X has green eyes, and they got that right, so... That's uh, very cool of them to have gotten that detail correct. You know, um, while we're just all over the place, there, there are some shots where he was drawn in a more, like, cartoony style. Like, his eyes are a little bit bigger and more exaggerated. Mm -hmm. And I think those look really, really good. Like, when he's looking back from Sigma. Mm. Like, that like that face is... I think that's the, the perfect version. It's not the super handsome version... Yeah, but it's like it's like the right in between, you know. Yes, I agree. I, I feel like half this episode might have been animated by one studio, and the other half was by someone else. Because <laughs> I feel like the animation and character models, um, like they just change kind of randomly throughout the episode. And I don't know why that is. Um, it's very weird. Um, I don't know, but uh, yeah. So looking at this, I guess let's just work our way from the top and go down. How about um, it? I know, right? Give him, give him a, a good once over from head to toe. Um, we're looking at uh, X, and he's got a really big forehead gem, uh, yes. at least in some shots, anyway. Um, and I like the larger size of the gem on his head. That's a big thing that I know the two of us really like. Mm -hmm. um, and it just looks good on him. 
It's got a nice shape. It was uh, has a good shine to it. I don't know if they know necessarily that it's like a gem, but they do get the idea that it's like shiny. Um, I mean, I guess it's kind of like a gem. It looks like glass of some kind. That's really cool. Uh, the little eyebrows, um, interestingly, don't come to a point. They actually connect at the forehead, um, as opposed to coming to, like, you know, like a, a complete point, like the, like Vanilla X does. And as you pointed out, the, the, the light blue part, which is really white in this version, uh, wraps around the back of the head. So it's interesting that this design for X calls back, well, I guess calls forward, um, to the Mega Man X8 design with how the, the eyebrows kind of connect at the bottom and then wrap around the back. And also how they're they're colored white, um, which is something that ZX would use, which is what we talked about in the previous episode. Oh, that's true. Isn't that neat? Yeah. And you know what? It, it, might, it might call back, forward, some, it, it'll call some direction to the other one we're going to talk about. Very interesting. Yeah, we'll, we'll be getting there uh, soon enough. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about is, we don't get to mention this much because, I mean, X's face is X's face, but in this episode, we're going to be talking about their facial features a bit more. Um, looking at this version of X, they gave them eyebrows. Um, and I mean, everyone in Ruby Spears has eyebrows, but these are just so pronounced, I, just, I have to mention it. Like, uh... They're, they're the fish hooks. <laughs> He's got, like, fish hook eyebrows. So they're like normal eyebrows that like, you know, go in an arch, but then there's also like a little spike that goes up. It, I don't know what you call those, but like they make me think of Ryu from Street Fighter. Oh man, I was just about to say it's it's just Ryu in there. That's why you can use the Hado the Hadoken. Uh, that exactly. That's exactly what it is. This is just Ryu in a Mega Man cosplay and he really is he's actually super embarrassed about it, so he invented the entire time travel <laughs> thing. Like he created this elaborate scenario to justify why he cosplays as Mega Man. <laughs> he doesn't want anyone to know, because it would make him lose respect as a fighter. <laughs> <laughs> um, but other, other than, uh, than that, those tiny little differences in the helmet, it's pretty much just X's helmet. Um, that's just what they did. It's, it's pretty much one-to-one. -one. So good on them for getting that. That's really cool. Um, mm -hmm. Moving down, let's talk about his, uh, his chest. What's going on there? Instead of the titties sticking out, they look like they're, like, it's an underlayer of armor instead of an overlayer. Yeah. Uh, it almost looks like it. it's like uh, the top part that would normally be the, the first layer um, is, is like, it, basically the, the, the X titties are indented as opposed to, you know, being on top, which yeah. is an interesting weird little inversion i don't know why they went that way um but it looks interesting it doesn't look bad it's just uh it's just different okay here it is um remember um remember the the robot college episode yes okay so this guy's wearing a crop top and he's got a like football pads on top so oh. he, he like dr light learned from his college he's like ah see i'm into football now Campus Commandos was good for something after all. <laughs> um, when I see this version of X, um, it makes me think of like the the front of a car. Okay. Yeah. Like I see I, that. like like the front of like a blue sports car. I, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if like I'm alone in that, but like that's the feeling. Like it doesn't look like one literally, but like that's the feeling it evokes. Mm -hmm. um, in my Thank opinion. You. Um. Not much to say about the shoulder pads, because they're pretty much just X's default shoulder pads. Although, in some scenes, they're a little bit more pointed than others. Um, but in some scenes, they're more round, like, you know, how X's shoulders are supposed to be. Um, but yeah, depending on the scene you're looking at, sometimes they're very long and pointy. And I don't know why they do that, but that's what they do. Um, also, talking about his chest, can we just... I, this is going to bother the crap out of me. He has a skin-colored neck. Yes, that's the biggest misstep of this design. Ugh, that really bothers me. Mega Man characters with um, skin-colored necks and hands ugh, ugh, really bothers me. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you've seen some popular edits online where people colored Mega Man characters' hands the same color as their skin, and it make, it's just it's very uncomfortable looking. 
Um, uh, the neck is just an extra layer of that that really makes it uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Quick, here's the edit. Oh, oh no, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. The good edit makes oh, the, the neck good better. edit. Y yay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Uh so yeah, I think that's like the chest. Uh is a it's a fairly simple design. There's not too much to talk about. Like um the bodysuit of course is still um light blue like like default X, so that's cool. Um the arms are basically like um default X's arms as well in that it's just like a blue egg, you know, just like regular uh X. But they added these neat little ridges that go along the end of the buster. Um, and I think on his arm, too. Yes. Uh, and I just think that's a cool look. I really like that. I think that's a nice touch. It makes me think of the Gaia armor and how they use that kind of thing. Um, and this is sort of uh, only seen in certain scenes, like this one where he's standing and there's like, you know, he's like looking over uh, and there's like all the smoke kind of slightly obscuring him. Mm -hmm. um, his buster barrel isn't like stuck on the end of the arm. It's like recessed in a little bit. Yeah, it is. That's weird. Yeah, it's like recessed in just a little bit, but I kind of like that look. Uh, I think that's cool that it's like inside. It gives the buster like a, a more stubby kind of look to it, but it's also cool because that ridge that's normally on the arm now kind of overhangs on top of the buster a bit, and that's a cool look. Um, it gives me X1 vibes because the, um, the light armor from X1 has like a... It's like a really fat buster, but it doesn't have any sort of barrel. It's just kind of open on the end. Um, mm -hmm. So this kind of makes me feel like that. If, like, if you were gonna have like a um, like a snub nose buster, so to speak, um, you would also, if you were gonna add a, a barrel to it, you would then make it short and kind of recessed, like it is here on X. Um, so I think that's a nice look to it. Um, that's, that's just how I feel. I like that one. Um, what do you think of his undies? Uh, he's got a cool belt to keep him from falling down. It's true. I, I do like the white on the on the thing. If you look at the blue, the the blue portion is just like default X, but now it has this neat white thing going across it. Mhm. Mm um, I like it. It looks good. Yeah, it keeps the it keeps the shape, but it adds its own little twist. It matches the helmet. Yeah, I really like that it ties the helmet together with like the waist. I don't know what it is about that, but it it looks nice. And I feel like if they added too much white, I feel like it would then start getting. It would distract from his overall color scheme, um, but the fact that they only use it once on the belt and then again on the helmet, I think, is a nice touch. Like it's the only two places. If you use it too many times, um, it doesn't look good. Um, it's also on his gloves because the gloves are, are white, of course. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's fine. I don't really count it because it's not yeah, part of the, really. the, the armor. But um, it is nice that the white is used sparingly because too many bright colors even though he's got dark blue all over the place, um, can be, you know, start changing the the overall color profile of him, I think. Yeah. Um, he's, got, he's got, like, knee pads, sort of. That's, yeah, he's got, like, the zero knee pads, but, you know, they're not, he's not zero. <laughs> of course. Unfortunately, we've never seen a Ruby Spears iteration of zero. Um, if only. <laughs> if only. Uh, if only. Um, but it's cool that they, they did that. Um, it's What's interesting is that I think the ridges on the elbow and the knee pads here is almost... I'm not saying this is a bad thing. It's like an overcompensation for the new details of, of how, um, on like the X characters, they have a little bit of an elbow and they have a little bit of a knee on their armor. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what I'm saying? As opposed to just connecting flat with nothing. There's like no overhang from either of those. But the X series started making it so that the leg connects on the top of the armor, but then there's like a little bit of a knee that comes up in front as, for as like a protective knee pad. Um, and the X-Series really started emphasizing that. I mean, so did the classic stuff. I mean, even regular Mega Man has that. Um, but um, I don't know. I just feel like they're really emphasizing those elements of the design um, a bit. So, I don't know. That's kind of neat. Uh, the legs are otherwise pretty plain. They're just blue. Uh, and his feet are kind of like uh, Ruby Spears Mega Man, um, except that they have a dark stripe on them, I think. Uh, I don't have any pictures of his feet handy, actually, now that I think about it. Yeah, I can't find any. I have one, but it's like really blurry and has like a stupid photo bucket watermark on it, so just, I don't know, just pretend that you saw the picture. But his feet ah. are basically the same as Ruby Spears Mega Man feet. 
um, except that they're more square and narrow, kind of like shoes. Um, and instead of Ruby Spears Mega Man, who has a light blue toe attacker, um, yeah. uh, Ruby Spears X is just a flat blue foot with a dark blue stripe going across it in the middle. Um, it's kind of neat. It's, it's a nice little touch. Anything else you had you, you wanted to talk about, just as far as like his physical armor? Look? Not really. I he he looks cool. I I love the flat thing on the Buster. Like on the regular arms, it's just kind of decent. But on the Buster, I think it it really ties it together. Yeah, I do think it looks best when it's um when it's on the Buster. Um, I don't think it needed to be on the arm. I think that's like a little overkill because. Um, putting it on the Buster kind of indicates, like, this is the Buster. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, so I kind of like that, personally. Um, but I don't know. You know, it's its its own little thing. Um, I, I mean, I don't know if this counts necessarily as his, uh, as his design. But um, ha he's absolutely completely jacked. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't More know if that's More so than the other characters. Oh yeah, like if you thought like Ruby Spears Mega Man was already really muscular, um, let's take a look. I mean, at X, he he's got like, he's got some crazy looking abs going on, uh, super insane abs. He's just ultra muscly. They really made him look like an action hero, and they definitely tried to uh, portray him uh, as an action hero. Um, like. It's weird because the ex we know is like very averse to fighting and he doesn't want to fight, but in this episode he has to be taught that fighting is bad. Well, like... that's, what, that, that's why he doesn't like fighting because he went back to the past and learned it. Yeah, I guess it's so weird. <laughs> oh man, uh, yeah, a lot of people uh, like to call this like murderous X, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, th the, that uh... was back in the days of X having one line per game. So. That's true, too. I mean, if you think about it, uh, in X1, he only has one line of dialogue. Like, literally, there's one line of dialogue. And it, it in English, it's, uh, I'm not, I guess I'm not strong enough to defeat him. And in Japan, it's, damn, I guess I'm not strong enough to defeat him. So, <laughs> it's kind of all there is to it. Uh, I guess they didn't have too much to go off of with his personality. But, I mean, even the basics of, of, uh, of X, I think, were laid out, where it's like, Okay, he's supposed to be like a fighter for justice. He doesn't like to fight, but he does if he has to. You know, things like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I guess they wanted to really emphasize the power difference between um, Mega Man X and like classic Mega Man here, um, because X is just blowing up everything. You oh, know, yeah. Like one shot from his Buster is like a nuke, and then Mega Man and Roller are just like Jesus Christ, dude, calm down. You know, like. It, I I don't know. It's it's hey, interesting. He has to destroy Maverick bots at all costs. That's what he needs that power for. You gotta have it when you're hunting Maverick bots. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's there he is. That's uh, he's everyone remembers this episode because it's the coolest thing ever for Mega Man X to team up with classic Mega Man. I think that's awesome. Um, and I like how he dances around the question of what happens in the future. Mm -hmm. And I'm also think it's funny that no one asks him like what happened to us because you know <laughs> not even Capcom knows at this point. Yeah. And um, I don't know, man. He, the one thing that I take away from this is that he's super, super, duper handsome. <laughs> he's jacked X, action that's, hero X. That's really how he pays the bills. That is how he pays the bills. He goes back to the future. And, like, he's hunting down Maverick bots, but when he's done doing that, like, I just <laughs> picture he's on, like, instead of, like, a fireman calendar, it's just, like, the Maverick Hunter's calendar. <laughs> he's, like, washing a, a, a ride chaser with, with no shirt on and a sponge. <laughs> he's wearing a bikini. Oh, God. <laughs> it's just his blue undies. No armor. Okay, we're getting... This is... Yeah, we're... I want to shake these thoughts out of my head. Can we... Can we talk about a, a, a different kind of, of uh, Mega Man X this time? <laughs> yeah, let's let's go for the let's go for the the soft boy. We're gonna go over to a different kind of, of beautiful version of X, who's also very handsome, 
Although he's more handsome in the Bashonen kind of way. Uh, let's talk about Iwamoto X. What do you got to okay. say about him? I dominated the other ones. I'm going to just step aside and let you handle this one. Well, it's so beautiful that it <laughs> brings a tear to my eye. Oh boy, does it? <laughs> <laughs> do you think X is just always crying because he's seeing his reflection somewhere? And he's oh. just like weeping at his own beauty? That makes more sense than anything I could say. Perfect. All right. Uh, so Iwamoto X, also known yeah. as Manga X. Let, let, let's just point out what's different, because there's not much. Yeah. The helmet has different colors on the mohawk and on the eyebrows. He has light blue yes. hands, and yes. the bodysuit is a bodysuit. It yes. wiggles and moves. Yes, yes to everything. Um, so for whatever reason, um, Iwamoto, when he uh, did the... I'm going to pull up his folding. Hold on, I can't keep... I want to say his full name at least once. Okay. Yoshihiro Iwamoto. Thank you. Okay. I just pretend I always knew what his name was. Um, <laughs> he, for whatever reason, decided that um, everyone in his manga is going to be super shiny. Um, way more shiny than anyone else in previous iterations of Mega Man have ever been. Um, he also decided that um, X would have blue hands as you pointed out, and the mohawk and eyebrows on the on the helmet, um, depending on when he drew the picture, change color, uh, actually. And as a matter of fact, depending on when he drew the picture, um, X's body changes a little bit. Not by a lot, but just a little bit. Right. Um, so in some of the images you'll see here, um, like for instance, this D-Arts uh, figure, um, Iwamoto X uh, has the, you know, the very shown in Iwamoto style face with like the, the, the eyes and like the, the the way the mouth is shaped and things like that it's really great um, the the little forehead mohawk thingy and eyebrows are actually silver in color it seems mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure you know why they they went with that but that's what they did um, and and I think the chest thingy, like right at the neck I, I call it like a collar um normally i think it's black but i believe on this figure they made it blue which matches the manga um and and stuff like that so that seems to be uh the direction they went in with that as far as colors go and of course he's got the blue hands um but then if you look at the chest it's still lavender but it's kind of a darker lavender that matches the blue armor a little bit more closely and depending on um I think there's like a prototype and a final uh, of that figure. They did make the chest more, uh, like the, the, the X titties more dark blue. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very strange. Like the colors are a little bit inconsistent because like I think he just changes the way he drew X. I think when he first drew um, X, he made the the, the, the X-ticles on his chest. Um, I think he made them darker blue to match the artwork for X1. Um, because he definitely starts making the the chest on X a little bit more light as the series progresses, which is what they started doing in the game's artwork as well. So right. maybe he was just imitating that. That's my guess. Um, but as I said, depending on when he drew this, you'll notice that in some of these panels, um, X's chest is either super accurate or it's really thick and square. Like... Like, what's going on with that? Like, if you look at this one uh, over here, uh, his X, his little chest X titty thingies are like really small. Like, they're like low, and they're they're like rectangular. It, it doesn't it doesn't really have the distinct shape that they normally do. And I'm not sure why he did that. That's the real chest capsule. Mm, yeah, <laughs> something like that. So I, I don't know what's up with that, but he eventually grew out of that and started drawing X like more properly. Like let's compare that, which is a very early version of X from like one of the first um, iterations of the manga, and then let's look at this page um, from uh, the Rockman X5 If manga, which is a hypothetical scenario, um, which reimagines the ending to Mega Man X5, where uh, for some reason or another X adopts. Uh, Zero's helmet and arm. Uh, and if we look here at X's chest, it is way more accurate to mm -hmm. how X has been traditionally drawn. 
Um, just in general, he looks way more accurate to how X is normally drawn. Um, so I don't know if that's just Iwamoto improving as an artist or him just realizing that he's been drawing off model all this time. I'm not sure. <laughs> but, column um, A, column B. Yeah, a little column A, a little column B. Either way, um, I love his art style and I think it's really cool. Um, yeah, it's really good. I, I love seeing long running things and how an artist improves. That kind of stuff is so much fun. Yeah, definitely. Um, in in some versions of the art, um, X will have like a very um, kind of like childlike face. Like uh, in this one over here, uh, which was honestly the first time I read this manga, I cried. I was like, oh my god. Like it was so like touching. Like this is, uh, for context, the, the manga opens with X responding to a Maverick attack. Um, and then I think he was going to fall or something. And then like Zero swoops in in like a, a Maverick Hunter hovering police car thing and catches him. Um, so they fight this Maverick and they beat it, but then after they're done, there's this little girl and her dog died in the Maverick attack. Um, and so X is crying over the loss of, you know, this girl's dog. And Zero is shocked by this because in the Iwamoto continuity, X is the only reploid that can cry. Um, and uh, X, you know, being the person he is, during the skirmish, was able to notice the girl and the dog, catch the dog's name, and he keeps that in mind when he's talking to the, uh, to the girl about the or about her dog, you know? And you can see here, he's like, he was a great dog, wasn't he? You know, and that, that really, that was like a like a, a stake in my heart. If yeah. I was a vampire, forget about it, you know? <laughs> um, but you can see, depending on how, uh, and, and depending on the mood, um, of uh, of the panel, or depending on the, the, the mood that X is supposed to be expressing, uh, his face will change drastically. Um, you can see in the top panel, X looks very much more adult. He looks more serious. And then in the bottom one, even though he's still crying and this is still a very serious moment, his face kind of squishes a little bit more and becomes more childlike. Um, and that, to me, even though, like, you can say this is, like, inconsistent art or whatever, um, I feel like Iwamoto uses that to great effect to um, capture emotions better. He's not afraid to mess with um, the way that he draws faces to make them expressive. You know, in, in a moment, he'll make a character more childlike or more adult or more, or more um, expressive in certain ways to really sell the emotion going on here. So X is talking to a child. He's relating to a child, and he sympathizes with this child. So, in the first panel, he's feeling the adult grief of what his job entails, and how that, you know, it has affected this girl, and how it, the loss of life is tragic. And then when he has to relate to this child, um, he, he himself looks more childlike, you know? Mm -hmm. um, that's something that's always... I've always thought about that after reading it, and I, I just had to, like, get it out, uh, you know? Um, and uh, there's even uh, a picture that we have here, which, um, forgive me, uh, we stole this from Reddit. I don't know uh, who made this handy-dandy image, um, but if you're watching this video, please comment down below and we'll credit you. Um, but you can see the difference in X's face overall, in a much larger overarching sense of what X looks like in Volume 1 versus what X looks like in Volume 3, which is like a much larger span of time for Iwamoto to have been drawing this. And you can see the very first version of X is kind of squished, kind of like childlike, you know? He looks very young. Um, but then, as you go look at the final version, he looks way more adult, you know? Mm -hmm. um, Literal coming-of-age story. Yeah, quite literally a coming-of-age story. You can actually watch X grow up as you read the manga because of all the experiences um, that he's been having. Um, and another thing I wanted to mention, which, again, this isn't so much about the X's design necessarily, um, but just a thing that Iwamoto does. Um, there's certain times where in certain panels um, he will remove a character's mouth, uh, and I'm not... I, I wasn't quite sure why he did it, and it, it like when you first read his work, um, it's like a little off-putting because you're like, "What the hell? Why did he get rid of their mouth?" And it doesn't like make a whole bunch of sense um, until you realize that what he's really doing is trying to be like extra expressive. It's almost as if um, X has his mouth shut so tight 
but you can't, like, there's no... It, it, he uses this a lot to express rage, um, or, like, a feeling of, of death, because the loss of the mouth does kind of make it feel unnatural. So it's like X is so angry that you can't even see his mouth. He wants to... He's using the, the medium of the art to, um get the emotion that X is feeling across without necessarily being anatomically correct. You know, X in this moment is it's it, it's supposed to be off-putting that there's no mouth there. You know, it's supposed to make you be like, oh my god, he's so frustrated. Like, the only thing that you should be focusing on is his eyes. You see how, like, the it's almost like the, the eyes are very, like, um, shaded and you can see them just fine, but, like, it, everything beneath there just kind of, like, fades out to white. Um... It, it, he's using that sort of great effect to emphasize certain details. Um, and I just think that's really fascinating how he does that. You'll see that a lot if you go and read the manga, if you find it translated online, where um, uh, for a lot of special moments in the series, especially for X, um, he just his mouth fades away, and all you can see is his eyes. And I think that's interesting that he, he does that to express... Uh, you know, great rage or, like, intense emotions. I think even in some moments when X is in a lot of pain, he does that, where X's eyes just become white and you can just see the outline of the eyes, but there's no mouth, you know? Uh, he He's... It's interesting how he obscures certain facial details to allow other ones to take the spotlight to emphasize the feelings happening on the page. So, I don't know. I, I think that's really cool. Um, I, when you read the manga, you just kind of have to get used to his, I'm not going to say it's a weird art style, but it is a little unorthodox, but if you just let yourself be absorbed into the art style and don't question it, just soak yourself into the story, um, his art style is really effective. Yeah, I think so. Like, um, it's one of those things, at least, like, from a Western point of view, like, the first time you see it, you're like, oh, it's weird. I don't like it. And then the more you mm -hmm. see it, it's like, oh, I get it. I get it. And then it becomes, yeah. I really like it. You know, because mm -hmm. I, I really like it now. Yeah, it's an artistic thing, not a uh, like an accuracy thing. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, depending on, on, you know, what's happening, he will, you know, emphasize certain things, you know? And, like, you just kind of have to get used to that. Realize that he's making an artistic statement, He's not um, necessarily trying to be anatomically accurate. Like, you can see in this one here, um, like, X is in, like, an enormous amount of pain. And so his eyes are whited out. Like, there's no, like, you can see that, like, he's in such pain or he's, you know, being hurt or he has been damaged to the point where his eyes are just gone. You know, it's almost like the, like the humanity is, is sucked out of him. Um, and I know that, especially for the eyes, that's an effect that has been used in a lot of different anime and, and manga. Um, but he's the only one I've ever seen that erases the mouth. <laughs> yeah. You know? I can't think of any more. But, um... uh, and the only other example mm -hmm. I can think of, just offhand, is... Uh, I'm gonna pull it up, because uh, it, it's a popular example. Uh oh. Uh, right here. It, it makes me think of this, from One Punch Man. <laughs> When he's, when he's throwing yeah. the, the death punch at, at uh, Genos, um, that's what this makes me think of. Like, if you could see uh, Saitama's face, there would just be no mouth there. It would just be, like, blank. Mm -hmm. That's what I think of, anyway. I getcha. But, but you know what Saitama can't do? What's that? He can't be five X-Busters at once. <laughs> I like how I just gave this big thesis on the emotional depth of, you, you know, Iwamoto's f***ing, like, art style and how, you know, incredibly profound, you know, X's journey as a character is, and you're just like, what if he was five X-Busters? <laughs> hey, Dr. Kane's into it, <laughs> so I can dig it. Doctor, okay, so here we go. Let's talk about this version of X. Uh, five X-Busters. <laughs> okay, like... Four I can give you, but the head also being a buster sells it so hard. <laughs> <laughs> this is official. If like if if you're if you're completely out of the loop, this is from 
what all this other beautiful art is from. It's yes. hilarious. If this is absolutely part of that. Um, <laughs> Iwamoto, when he wants to, can be really funny. Um, anyone who's read the uh, X1 volume of the manga knows that um, the interactions between X and Marty, who is mm -hmm. um, a character that I'll, I'll have to cover sometime. Best um, character. She's one of the best characters in the entire series. I love Marty. She's great. Um, Marty for but... dive. Uh, yeah, Marty for dive. Let's go. That's a perfect place for her. I I want Iwamoto X to be in uh, uh, to be in dive. I think he'd be different enough that you could you know do something meaningful with him. I think um, so. But at any rate, uh, Marty is this character that has a lot of funny interactions with X, and like you can see X go from like super serious, like you know good boy maverick hunter to like complete goofball in like a split second you know just because of the way that they interact and uh, Iwamoto's not afraid to to show that on screen and i just think it's really funny seeing uh the the goofy faces that x makes like uh i think there's one time where like she slaps him in the face with her tail <laughs> like x is just completely flabbergasted at the fact that he's been slapped in the face by a mermaid tail <laughs> like <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> What's happening here? <laughs> and that's after he oh, got no. the helmet upgrade. <laughs> that's I mean, honestly, me. if the helmet upgrade can't protect you from mermaid slaps, what can? These are questions that I come to you for. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to have to do a whole video on it at some point. Marty is a whole separate topic. Um, I love Marty. Uh, I feel like she was Iwamoto's uh, favorite character. She's definitely... Has like some OC vibes, but like she's so likable, I can't even be mad. Oh yeah, and she has like three really strong designs. Like yes. over the course of the whole thing. Good stuff. Her first design is my favorite personally, the mermaid design because it, it feels mm. the most like a like a Mega Man character. Um, her later designs feel like they would fit in more with Mega Man Zero because she has like basically a perfectly humanoid body, which, and she doesn't have like the big chunky Mega Man limbs. Um, and I feel like that was more of, like, an original design choice by Iwamoto himself. Um, but, um, I, that's just me, personally. But, I mean, I just like her so much as a character. I don't care what she looks like. She's great. We just need more Marty. <laughs> yes. More Marty, please. 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 So, yeah. Iwamoto's very expressive. Beautiful, beautiful art. He likes to put X in a tux. Yes, that's another one. I I don't, know how I, I don't remember the context it. behind this. <laughs> I just look at him. What was the context? I don't know. He's just a happy boy. He's just a happy boy. I know Volt Catfish is there for some reason. Uh, I don't remember what for. I don't know what the I I don't remember what the joke is. But look at X. He's in a tuxedo. I know a lot of you guys are complaining that everyone's getting uh, casual outfits for like White Day and stuff like that, and like you you want uh, X to finally get one instead of his like dozens of armors i vote for this let's get tuxedo x to be a character man that that would be such a good like anniversary costume wouldn't it <sighs> if only i like it i want that to be a thing you know what else i want what's that this amazing beautiful statue of zero's death Ooh, let's talk about that one Man, first of all, if you have one, congratulations. Um, yeah, yeah sure. Um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> kidding. The, as of as of now, more so than when they released, um, as Mr. Dink would say, they're very expensive. <laughs> they're expensive. <laughs> but um, uh, yes. oh man, this is art. It is beautiful. Just all the damage and just the emotion. Ah. Oh, so good. Yeah, this is one of the more pivotal moments in the X series in general, um, and it's beautifully captured here in the Iwamoto art style because um, in the manga this this happens. Um, you know, this is how it's portrayed. Um, and uh, in the original game, it's I mean you can only do so much with the amount of sprites you have available. But like Zero is like, go on without me, X, Blah. and then he like fades out <laughs> of existence. <laughs> um, and then X just gets up and carries on his way. Um, but we all know that this is supposed to be a very emotional moment. 
Um, and so you can see in this artwork, Iwamoto, like I said, he does things with his work that you don't get to see in the games. He gets to explore concepts that are not seen in the games, and he does it to great effect. Uh, just so good. Um, so you could really see and feel the emotion here uh, and what the scene is supposed to be like. Um, you can see Zero is there. You can see how badly damaged he is. Um, they, I mean, you can really see how badly damaged he is. There's um, some close-ups we have here of like their internal mechanisms, um, which is just insanely detailed. It's all very metal and chrome, super awesome how you can see their parts. You can almost tell how each piece would move if it were, you know, like, if it were real. Um, X obviously looks like he's gone through, you know, hell and back. But, you know, he's the one who's still standing there in one piece, and Zero isn't. Like, the amount of detail on this is so insane. Like, even, like, the backside. You know, because usually with the back of stuff, you don't put too much detail in it. But even how Zero's hand is just, like, slumped you know, down, like, mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's dead, he's, you know, he's, he's not coming back. Dead. But no, just all of his, like, the guts spilling out, and everybody's dirty and beat up, oh. You man. can get away with it because they're robots. It's so good. It's really great. Um, I, I want to get one of these, and I was very interested in it, but I couldn't justify it at that price point. Um, when I eventually the urge to get this becomes too much to resist um i'll probably hate myself because it'll probably go for like a thousand dollars or something like that mm. um so uh <laughs> i'd love to get one one day but I, I don't have anywhere to put it and i just can't justify that price but i am not denying in any way shape or form that this is probably one of the most beautiful pieces of Mega Man merchandise in existence so uh definitely it's great and i'm super happy that um the Iwamoto X manga, which often gets overshadowed by the Mega Mix uh, manga, um, by um, oh my God, uh, Hitoshi Ariga. Um, I mean, not to diminish that, of course, but Iwamoto, I feel like, always gets overlooked. So I'm super happy that he was acknowledged in in some way, at least, um, with the D Arts figure of X. Um, the glass of bourbon that Vile's model kit, uh, not the model kit, the Vile's D-Art comes with. I'm glad mm -hmm. they did that. Um, <laughs> Black Zero comes with a Bashonin face that you can give to Red Zero, so you have um, manga a manga version of Zero. <laughs> um, and I'm glad that he has this really impressive uh, statue that they made of his artwork. It's just good stuff. I'm, I'm so glad it got to, like, that it just got to be made. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm, I'm super happy this is being immortalized. Um, he even had basically the, a novelization done of his interpretation of the X-Series. Um, I, I mean, that's been translated by fans, um, and that's fantastic. But man, I am I don't understand why we haven't gotten his manga translated yet, because it's so good. Like, why won't they just translate it and bring it overseas? I feel like it's... And if you're a Mega Man X fan, um, I think this is like a central reading. I think you should definitely give it a, give it a shot. Um, it's an easy way to engage with the X series without necessarily having to like, you know, buy the games and play them and get good at them and all that other stuff. You can really experience. You can run the full gamut of, of uh, emotions and, and and issues and like philosophical questions that you might have um, just by reading the manga, and you'll have a fantastic story. Um, that elevates the original source material really high, and you'll also have some great comedy if you're into that. And you just and you just love Mega Man shenanigans. There's tons of that. Um, for instance, we have this beautiful statue of uh, you know X holding Zero, but when are we gonna get a statue commemorating X's first drink of bourbon? <laughs> when are we gonna get when are we gonna get this as a statue, huh? <laughs> Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, in the manga, um, while chasing down Armored Armadillo, um, X stops at, like, an old, like, mining town saloon that's been, like, abandoned, um, and he finds Vile in there, and, uh, Vile waxes poetic about what it means to be a Reploid, and he says something to the effect of, um, <laughs> we can't uh, he's like, we're cursed to, to, like, never know, like, what anything tastes like. 
um, because we're we're artificial. We don't we don't taste things like humans do. So he's holding a glass of bourbon whiskey, and he's like, I can't tell if this whiskey tastes like whiskey or if it tastes like mud if I were to drink it. And then he shatters it in his hands because he's effectively wasting it because it's like I can't do anything with it and, it's, and it sucks. So this artwork is kind of poking fun at that, where Vile forces X to try some and X hates it. <laughs> <laughs> Blah. <laughs> <laughs> I really love his sense of humor, and as, as serious as the X-Series manga is, um, I would have loved to have just seen more shenanigans like this. He's really funny. I want a statue of Five Busters X. Yeah, Five Busters X <laughs> should happen. Um, I think if you have enough D-Arts figures, you might be able to make it work. <laughs> I, I've, I've seen someone do it with Kotobukiya, so... Well, there you go. Now you can, the dream has become reality. <laughs> Not for me, I don't have that many busters. Well, at least not the right <laughs> kinds of busters, but you know what? That's all. Upgrade them. Just put them in... Use, like, Armored X as, like, the, the torso basis. And then just zero stick busters. A... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Stick in a whole bunch of different busters around him. Give it some variety. <laughs> <laughs> when they inevitably make vile... Just stick vile shoulder cannon on each leg to make him, like, a peg leg or something. <laughs> there you go. Can we talk about this other piece of art? It's um, probably the only time we'll get to talk about it. But Iwamoto drew all the the playable characters and the navigators. Just They're all just falling down from heaven being like, Good boy, X. You did it! Hooray! <laughs> yeah, um, I, I believe that um, there's like a, a compilation volume um, because the, the original Iwamoto run of the X series... I think it stops after X4. I believe yeah. you or, or someone else told me that. Uh, and it never quite goes into X5 or X6 or anything else. And it, it kind of stopped. Um, and so um, there is an extra follow-up volume, which is basically like an epilogue, which just summarizes the events um, of like X5, 6, and 7. Uh, and then I think it does a little bit of 8, basically. Um, and then, yeah. So I think that's what this is from. And it's showcasing... Uh, the characters, um, you know, just kind of doing their thing together. And mm -hmm. you can see what Axel might have looked like in Iwamoto's style. You can see Zero in his new sleeker design, which I'm sure Iwamoto loved, because he already streamlined Zero quite a bit, and he, he loved drawing Zero without his helmet on for some reason. Um, of course, there's um, uh, Alia, and there's Palette, and Palette is her, you know, typical chipper self. And then, and then there's Lair hiding behind her own boobs. There's a lot going on in the middle. <laughs> there's a lot happening. <laughs> but, um, I don't, I mean, this could just be me. I don't know if Lair is supposed to be, like, extra tan, but she almost looks like she's embarrassed, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, like, she, <laughs> like, like, she looks like she's hiding behind her legs and her chest. Like, and, you oh, know, that's that's something they kind of echo in uh, in X-Dive. They make Lair, mm -hmm. like, a little bit embarrassed, like embarrassed about herself, I think. Yeah. I wonder if that's, like, something that's in Japan that we just never... that we don't know about, maybe? That might be. Well, I mean, we see in X8 in the game that she gets flustered easily, so... That's true, but, I mean, the only reason why she was getting flustered is because Pala was teasing her, so... Hey. She was outing her. She was like, no, don't tell Zero how I feel. <laughs> you can't know my feels. <laughs> but I do. But she does. Um, I think the X8 style lends its, or the X8 designs lends itself to Iwamoto's art style because he always kind of draws the characters as people with armor on them. Um, that's always how he's kind of handled their anatomy, um, and so X8 lends itself to that because they're the most humanoid out of all the other designs that he's done. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that just kind of works for him. So I'm sure he's happy that that's what they did. But uh, that's all I got on that one. Yeah, I think that's that. Um... We got two very, I guess, different interpretations of X, but they're they're some of the some of the best. I think they're so memorable. And yeah, they're very striking. Yeah, like you see them and you're like, "That's X," instead mm -hmm. of, "Oh, I I see what they're going for." You know, I guess it's X. You know what I mean? Yeah, you see them and you instantly recognize it as X, despite the fact that it's different. Um, it doesn't look like a complete redesign, even though some of the elements are very different. It's good stuff. Um, 
It's great which stuff. one is your favorite? Huh? Yeah, out of the two that we discussed today, uh, which one is more handsome? <laughs> <laughs> uh, which one do you think um, is better? Which aspects of each do you like? If you have read the Iwamoto manga, tell us uh, which part is your favorite. Uh, and does X ever stop crying? <laughs> I don't think he does. <laughs> I think he's always crying. <laughs> he's got little windshield wipers on his eyelashes. I think I figured it out. A X is the embodiment of Western fans because the manga was never released over here, so we're crying exactly. about it. Exactly. Exactly. I get it now. He knew. Now I understand. <laughs> Alright, everybody. Um, thank you for watching. And I guess we'll see you next time. Yeah. Thanks very much for coming. See you later.